Yes. All right. So um, this is our second. <laughs> It's not October 1st, but this is our second um, hypothesis testing review. Um, so we talked about, we just started hypothesis testing last week, and now we're going to do the second part. Um, so first thing we want to talk about is um, when we make decisions in terms of um, an error that could be made for statistics. So if you're doing a hypothesis test, um, remember I talked about last week that alpha value that we compare a p-value to is what we use to, to figure out if um, that's what we use to figure out um, if it's, you know, wh what our type one error is. That's a probability of a type one error. And then we have our um, type two error, which is different um, in terms of that's failing to reject the null when the null is actually false. We call that beta. Um, so yeah, type two error is going to be, so failing to reject the null, meaning that we're saying that there's we're saying that there is a change or that, that there's no change, but when in reality there is a change. Um, so that's the null being false. That means that there's a change. Um, so once again, type one error, rejecting the null when the null is actually true. And like I said, we have that as alpha. Um, same idea that we were using last week. And then beta is gonna be the, the, our type two error. And this is just a good table to kind of use. Uh, it's like a two-way table to show you basically like if this is a decision you make from your hypothesis test, but in reality, this is um, what is true about it. You know, if you find the intersection of these, then you can figure out if these are, if you made a correct decision or if you made an error in this case. So that's just a good two-way table to use that. Um, okay, and then, so power is something that I think trips a lot of people up, but you really don't make it more complicated than it is. So when you have power, it's just saying that so remember, our type two error, so we first want to review that, it's rejecting the null, given that the null is false. So we're saying that, there's, that there is a change when there isn't, or sorry, I swear this is, <laughs> this, is my, this always screws me up. Okay, so yeah, failing to reject the null when the null is actually false. So that's saying we think that there's, we say that there's no change, but there actually is a change, okay? So that's our type two error. And then um, once again, like, once again, power is our probability of, of committing a type two error. Um, so, and then one minus beta, this is just showing you here, um, that's our power, one minus beta. So remember, beta, probability of committing a type, one, type two error, power, one minus beta. So it's basically everything except for a type two error. Um, and then uh, the, there's an inverse relationship between alpha and beta. Um, so if you decrease alpha, your probability of a type one error, it's going to increase beta. If you have a fixed sample size, this you can't like be moving it around and whatnot. Um, and this should make sense because it's basically saying, you know, if you decrease the probability of getting one error, you're going to increase the probability of getting the other one and vice versa. Um, so that's all power is. It's basically, it's just, you want to think of it in terms of, you know, you know the probability of committing a type 2 error and then everything but that is going to be your power in that case. So this is more, um, this is more conceptual for power. I haven't seen it used that much, um, but so that's what I'm saying. It's like a concept, a concept that you guys want to um, understand, but that's the main point there. Um, okay, and then our p-value, just to review what this is, um, is going to be for our test statistic, it wants to be less than or equal to the level of significance. Um, so remember, we often say our, our level of statistics or significance is always alpha. We often use 0.05, 5%. And remember, alpha is going to be our probability of type 1 error again. And we're basically just saying that we want that to be lower, or we want our p-value to be lower than that in order to say that we have statistical significance there. Um, so that's the main idea. Okay, and then practical significance, this is just talking about, you know, st so statistical significance is when we find it in terms of, you know, numbers and whatnot. What did we, you know, find at the end of the day? What the, um, you know, what, what conclusion do we make based upon our samples and whatnot? Um, practical significance is basically saying, is this actually something that matters in real life? Or did we just find numbers that are kind of, you know, not that important. So practical significance is taking the conclusion that we got and then moving forward and saying, okay, this is actually practical in real life. And that's when we, we call this, um, what well, practical significance is saying the magnitude of the difference. So you obviously want that to be big. Um, cause if your magnitude of difference is big, it's saying that we think it's practically significant. We also call it effect size. Um, so you know how much the, um, 
the data is affecting it or you know affecting the real life situation and so like it says their difference has to be large enough to be meaningful in real life um, so that's the main idea uh, just understand the difference between statistical significance and practical significance um, because uh, statistical significance you can get that but if it's not you know applicable applicable in real life then it's not that um you know well it's important but you know that's usually in statistics we want it to be applicable in real life so oh we are at reviews already amazing this is a short chapter if you guys haven't noticed um because kind of building on the last one but remember like i tell you guys every week you want to make sure you get these bases of the um of the information so that you can move forward and understand it later on um, and not be confused by any of that. So, all right, so let's try this one. So given that the alternative hypothesis is really true, the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected is known as what? So this is like a definition. So try this one out and let me know what you think. Okay, so remember, so given that the alternative hypothesis is really true, let me, sorry, I want to write this out. So saying that the alternative hypothesis is really true means this is saying that, that there is a change, okay? So is a change there. <laughs> there is a change. So that's what this means. Um, null is really true. And then the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected so this is saying that there actually is a change, once again. Um, so, because the null hypothesis is saying that there's no change, so if we're rejecting it, we're saying that there is a change. And <laughs> yeah, I know this is tough. This is one of those things that you need to take it step by step and understand, like I often write that chart out that I had on there, um, and then I'll also write like uh, phrases like this, you know, so for like type one, you know, I'll write like probability that this is this and whatever. So um so yeah like I'll, I'll literally put in you know one of those boxes like probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected given that the alternative hypothesis is really true you know so something like that so our answer here is actually um a because remember when we are talking about power it's one minus beta our beta is the probability of making a type two error um so probability that the null hypothesis is rejected so remember a type two error when we're talking about um, that is just that's saying that if we um, reject or fail to reject the null when the null is really false. Um, so this is saying that we we're saying that there is no or given that the alternative hypothesis is really true, so that there is a change, um, the probability that the null will be rejected. So this is this is correct. You know, this is like a, a this is a good thing. You know, so that's why these aren't either the, the alternative. Uh, if the alternative hypothesis is true, then the null is false. Um, yes, in this case, no, yeah, 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 no, in this case, that's what, <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, see, I, I have to wrap my head around it too, I have to, you know, think through, but um, yes, that's saying, and this is saying, because this is like the definition of power, because um, in this case, you made a correct decision, um, so you have, you know, so we know that the alternative hypothesis is true, so this was the in reality part, um that we had on that uh two-way table and then the probability that the null hypothesis is rejected and like i said again same thing that there is a change so it can't be a type one or type two error because it's not um that's not what we're no <laughs> that's um those are like errors so that's not what we want so yeah so our answer has to be a that's what power is so does that make sense and like i said these are things that it's it's better to do them independently and think through it okay from the box Yes, exactly. So the correct decision. So like I said, um, let me go back. Um, 
alternative hypothesis is really true, probability that the null hypothesis is rejected. So probability that the null hypothesis is really true. So null hypothesis is really true. And then the um, probability that the null is rejected. So do, or I, wait, let me make sure that it, the probability that, so given that the alternative hypothesis is true, oh, sorry, that's why. Given that the alternative hypothesis is true, so the null is false, um, and then the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected, which is this one, is gonna be um, our correct decision, also known as power. Um, so, and I was just putting power here. I mean, yeah, I guess I can do that, but um, so remember then in this case, so like I said here, um, one minus beta probability of committing a type two error. So everything except for the type two error is gonna be our power. Um, so that's saying that that's like that not making an error, um, not making a type two error. So that's, so remember a type two error is um, incorrectly, incorrectly rejecting the null. Yes, it, incorrectly rejecting the null. Okay, that's what a type two error is. So here, incorrectly rejecting the null. So one minus that probability of incorrectly rejecting the null is the rest of it, you know, in that is going to be correctly rejecting the null. So I guess you can also say that. Is this I, thing on? Yeah, yes. I, I can't type anymore. So what did you say? Um, a type two error is incorrectly Rejecting what? the null. Rejecting. Because if you see here, so the null is false. This is in reality, the null is false, but we didn't reject the null. Okay. So failing to reject the null when the null is really false. So incorrectly, let me say, I want to make sure I say it in a way that's not too confusing. Failing to reject the null. The null is really false. You're basically saying that there's a change, or you're saying that there's no change when there is a change. That's a better way to say it. Let me write that down. Um, saying, whoa, what is going on? Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, send help. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like moving around my mouse. Oh God. Send all the help. Oh, I'm confusion. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, let me unplug this and plug it back in. That's a really good representation of how my brain feels. <laughs> I honestly, I understand. I totally understand. So let me try this again. So this is saying that you say that there's a so failing to reject the null. So you say that there's, um, say, see if I can do this. There's a change when there's not. Okay. So um, this correct decision here, reject it. It's like correctly rejecting the null is going to be your power. So this is correctly rejecting the null. Okay. So that's why, because beta is saying that there's a change when there's not. So um, you're rejecting the null when there's when you shouldn't reject it. Here, you're rejecting the null when you should have rejected it. Does that help at all? <laughs> like I said, this is one of those things that you're going to want to watch this back and listen to it again. Like right now, it's probably like, ugh, but like, the more and more you do it, the more it makes sense. But I'm telling you right now, I still have to think about it because it's the, the vocabulary used in statistics is very like, ah, what's going on? So, um, yeah, like I really, I don't like that phrase, um, fail to reject the null. I know. The reason why we say that is because we can't accept the alternative because we're not certain that there's a change and we can't say, you know, we are certain that there's change because remember it's a hypothesis, but we're saying that we think there's evidence that there's a change, which is why, um, we considered that. Okay. So, the null is like <sighs> the null is saying there's no change but like the null like um in general like if there's a null hypothesis about something that is like the the standard of like what is expected or the norm yeah we always of. assume that the null is true 
okay so that's like normal and then the alternative hypothesis would be like if they were trying to disprove the null hypothesis basically yeah because that's saying that there is a change so okay. null, i'm just trying to put like a practical knowledge like a practical yeah no i totally this, this, this does not it's I know. not practical I know. <laughs> so your null is saying that there's no change okay and that's why we always use the equal sign because we're saying that there's no change it's equal okay oh, that's supposed to be an equal sign okay and then the alternative is saying that there is an equal sign so there i mean what am i okay <laughs> is a change um so yeah so that those are the like two like simplified versions of them so failing to reject the null means that we're still gonna sit and we always assume that this is true okay so like assume the null is true oops um so we always assume the null is true. So basically we're trying to uh, get information to prove that wrong. So if we don't have enough information for that, our, our P value is not you know, showing us that, it's showing a, a, us a big probability of making a type one error, we can't say that that's correct. So we have to say, you know, we're still gonna assume that there's no change. That's what failing to, that's what failing to reject the null is, saying that our P value is too big. Okay, and then failing to reject and do not reject, those are the same, they're interchangeable? Failing to reject. Yes. Yep. Okay. I think I like do not reject better. Do not. Reject. Yeah. Use. That's what I'm saying. Use the language that you understand, but also understand the language in statistics that you know you'll see on exams and stuff, so that you understand that. But um, but yeah. Other than that, I think you'll be okay. Okay. So can we go back to that question that you just yep. did the um review question one? Yes. Let me. Oh. Send help. Okay. I'm sorry for dragging this out. Oh no, please no, you're totally fine. That's why that's why I'm here. So I have yes. Olympics to go watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right? Yeah, I know I feel you, girl. All right, let's All see. Right. So taking the chart that um you just showed us, so if it's pa if it's the correct decision, then it would be power. Right. Okay, and then the type one error, type two. Okay, so the type one error would be the alpha error? Right. Type 1 error, or alpha represents the probability of making a type 1 error. Okay, and type 2 is, beta. okay, because alpha, beta, beta, second. Mm -hmm. um, so here what we have, so this is saying, given that the null hy or the alternative hypothesis is true, is really true, so there is a change, we're looking for the probability that um, we reject the null. So reject the null, which is the same thing as saying there is a change. That's why it's a correct decision. Okay. So if we reject the null, we're saying we see a change. And in this case, it's saying in reality, there's a change. What's the probability that we say that there's a change? Okay. How well? And then that one minus alpha, that would be nowhere on that chart, like the yeah. decision reality chart. That's just to throw us off there, it right? Be, yeah. Okay. I didn't really think about it. It might be, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Is that good? Right. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. All right, of course, yeah. All right, let's try this one. So at one student-run cafe, the number of muffins sold, I'm hungry. Wait, I'm sorry. Number of muffins sold each day was recorded for 47 days. Assume this is a representative sample. Given the output, which of the following conclusion is correct? So read through um, A through D and let me know what, um, Conclusion you think is correct, and then we will talk it through together.
Okay, so let's get it. So what we want to do to figure out our conclusion, remember, we're always trying to decide. Um, yes, good. Yeah, it's D. So we're always trying to decide based upon our p-value. So our p-value here is greater than alpha, which we often say is 0.05. So since the p-value is greater than alpha, we're going to fail to reject the null. Whoa which is saying that we, we're still assuming that there's no change. So in this case, so D says there's not evidence that in the population, the mean number of muffins sold is greater than five. So we're saying that there's not evidence that there's change because we're failing to reject the null. So we're assuming still that there's no change. So that's why D is the answer. C can't be it because it's saying that there's, there is evidence. So that would mean, this would have to mean that our p-value is less than our alpha, but in this case it's not. So that's why we fail to reject the null and move on from there. Does that make sense? Yay. Sort of. <laughs> so remember, all you want to do is look at your p value, see if it's larger or smaller than alpha, and then based upon that, make a conclusion. So in this case, it was larger than alpha. So you fail to reject the null, saying that there's no change. So we can't make a conclusion that, oh, okay, yeah, 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 don't, yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, don't look at the mean. When you're making a conclusion for a hypothesis test, you always want to look at the p-value there. But yeah, good. Muy bueno. All right, let's do a few more. So a university administrator writes a report in which he states that at least 45% of all students have driven under the influence of drugs or alcohol. No bueno. Many others think the correct percentage is less than 45%. What are the appropriate null and alternate hypotheses in this situation? So we're trying to practice writing them out. So let me know what you think for this answer is and we will go over it together. Okay, yes, I totally understand that. So remember our um, different, if we're looking at the different um, symbols we use, right, our conclude, so we always write hypothesis or hypotheses in terms of our population. So remember our population symbols that we use for means is gonna <laughs> swoopy P, I'm dead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try to figure out what, what you mean by that. So our population mean is gonna be um, mu, is that swoopy P? Is that what you're trying to? Oh, are you thinking like this thingy kind of? Yeah, the one. That's for like correlations, yeah. Okay, what's that called? Mu. Yeah, I like swoopy P better though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get that changed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so population and then sample. Um, and then remember, so for means, we use X bar, and then for proportions, we use P hat. So in this case, we wanna um, use either one of these two, um, and since we're talking about a percentage, so that's gonna be a proportion. And then since we're talking about proportions and we're writing these, we want it to be P. So our answer is gonna be C because, um, remember, so this is good because our, our null hypothesis always has the equal sign, and then um, it's saying 
they're they're trying to test if the hypothesis is less than 45%. So that's why we use the less than sign in our alternative hypothesis. Okay, yes. All right, cool. So let's do one more. Okay, boop boop doop. Excuse me. Okay, a little bit. What is going on? I like I'm in okay. All right, here we go. Okay, last one. So a hypothesis test is done in which the alternative hypothesis states that more than 10% of a population is left-handed. The p-value for the test is calculated to be 0.25, which statement is correct? So this is a good one to practice again for the conclusions that we make based upon our p-value. So let me know what you guys think about this and we will review it. All right, yay, no question marks. We're, we are confident, okay? So, wait, where's my, ah, okay. So, in this case, our answer is D. Good job. So, whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said the answer is D and I circled A. I'm okay. Um, okay, so our P value here, which is the um, is 0.25, which is greater than alpha, which is 0.05. Okay, so since it's on um, that, so we're gonna fail to reject, reject the null. So this means that there's no change. So it's saying we cannot conclude that more than 10% of the population is left-handed because we cannot um, conclude that there is a change. Um, so Bless you. <laughs> we cannot. We can't conclude that there is a change. Um, so this is saying we can't conclude that more than ten percent of the population is left-handed. So, um, so yeah. So, and because that's what they were trying to figure out, more than ten percent of the population is left-handed. That's what our alternative hypothesis was. But since we failed to reject the null, we can't conclude um, this alternative hypothesis is no bueno. So the answer is D. Everyone good on that one? Woo all right, all right, so cool. All right, so yeah, go ahead and if you want to watch this back and talk more about rejecting and fail to rejecting and all that stuff, um, check it out on the YouTubes. I'm getting viral on there, get ready. Um, and so I don't know when our next group review is because it's gonna be for the midterm, so um, we're still figuring out that schedule, but uh, that'll be posted in the email to you guys and whatnot if you want to come hang out again.
just I'm gonna hang out. I don't wanna be by myself. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, if you have questions, um, let me know now. If not, you guys are good to go for tonight. I think you guys gave me your Penn State email. So you guys are good. Yep, have a good night too.